Are we telling our kids that they're too special? Is that actually hurting them in the long run? No matter how often your paternal caped crusader has swooped in to save you, you are nothing special. Yes, you've been pampered, cosseted, doted upon, helmeted, bubble wrapped. Yes, capable adults with other things to do have held you, kissed you, fed you, wiped your mouth, wiped your bottom, trained you, taught you, tutored you, coached you, listened to you, counseled you, encouraged you, consoled you, and encouraged you again. You've been nudged, cajoled, wheedled, and implored. You've been feted and fawned over and called sweetie pie. Yes, you have. And certainly we've been to your games, your plays, your recitals, your science fairs. Absolutely smiles ignite when you walk into a room and hundreds gasp with delight at your every tweet. Why, maybe you've even had your picture in the townsman. And now you've conquered high school. And indisputably here, we all have gathered for you the pride and joy of this fine community, the first to emerge from that magnificent new building. But do not get the idea you're anything special. <laughs> because you're not. <laughs> you're just not. Well, listen, that was, uh, that was uh, a while back in 2012. It went viral. 2.2 million views on the tube. David McAuliffe uh, joins us now uh, to talk about his book uh, that is basically the same title. You're, you're not all that special, folks. <laughs> uh, just, you know, wake up and smell the coffee. So do we, do we do a disservice to our kids by doting on them and continually building their self-esteem and telling them what's special little snowflakes they are is that is that basically a, a mistake of parenting i good morning i think so i think um with good intentions parents have uh, inadvertently created kind of soft entitled kids who expect things to fall in their lap and if they don't somebody else will come along and fix it for them now, you're a high school English teacher, so I'm guessing you are uh, drawing your conclusion from some firsthand <laughs> evidence. Tell me about uh, what you see in your classroom and how this manifests actually into a very, very negative thing for kids in the long run. Well, I, not only am I a high school teacher of nearly 30 years' experience, I'm also a parent of four. I have three teenagers myself, so I see this from both sides. And by no means am I wagging a disapproving finger at the parents. I understand absolutely how these things happen. Um, they, they manifest themselves in all kinds of ways. Uh, any little misstep is construed by both the child and the parent as catastrophe. And that makes teaching difficult because kids can't grow without taking risks. They can't learn without venturing into uncharted territory. I mean, that's sort of the whole point. Well, and if if I'm, they're afraid of failure, um, they're not going to learn very much. And so many times, I I, I I talk about this occasion with my friends. You know, parents rush in to prevent the failure, that's but right. it, but it's through your failures that you really learn to, to you know what life is truly about. It prepares you for the life experience because exactly. it, it's not going to be all a, a, a bunch of uh, sunshine, lollipops, and roses when you enter the workforce, right? Precisely. Uh, kids need to learn that just because they fail, they themselves are not failures. Um, and in fact, how you pick yourself up after something goes awry is much more instructive than just smooth sailing all the time. That's what defines you. That's right. Well, let me ask you this question. Along the same lines, it seems that on the field of athletic play, especially with young children, that you know everybody who shows up, gets a ribbon the participation and, trophy yeah, everybody yeah. everybody's a winner there are no losers is that a good thing or a bad thing i think it's a bad thing i also think a bad thing is the parent shouting instruction to the child from the sideline um and janice my wife and i have a son in college who's on the baseball team there and we were at a game the other day and there was a dad with a uh, whose son is quite a good player who was shouting at the kid from the stands instruction through every phase of the game yeah. and the, the, the father felt his participation was not just appropriate but essential to the child's success and it doesn't matter if the kid is six or in this case 22 if what you're hearing rings true or if you disagree i'd love to hear from you 888-630-9625 also if you like what you're hearing the author that you're hearing right now david mccullough jr uh, he's going to be at 
Barnes & Noble Booksellers in Bethesda tonight at 7 p.m. for a book signing. And the name of that book is what I want to ask you about, David McCullough. Uh, you Are Not Special and Other Encouragements. Uh, <laughs> I love that, but I need you to explain it. How is telling your child that they aren't special actually uh, an encouraging message? Well, you're encouraging the kid to get over himself. And <laughs> it's like you know my daughter. Remind the child... Yet kids today are so pressured to succeed that, to them, self-involvement feels like being responsible. And that's you know, less than ideal. Um, they also think that every step they make is laden with significance, and therefore they've got to be very careful. And that eliminates any sense of fun, any sense of whimsy, any sense of following an interest, there is following something that might become an interest. Uh, it's it's uh, a concerning situation. All right. So look, you know, when when I became a parent, you know, I went out and did what I guess every uh, you know parent does. They get the book. They try to read. You know, how to raise a kid. Maybe you you know you read about you know how to raise your kid in a productive way. And and the message is always the same. You can't praise a kid too much. You can't build up their self-esteem enough that there'll be plenty of people out there who want to tear them down, and it's your job as a parent to be on their side always. I think uh, to a degree that's true, but you can't make it about the praise. You don't want the kid doing something because he's seeking praise. You want him doing something because he thinks it's fun or interesting or might lead to something fun or interesting, but don't make it about the praise itself. Um, you know, pleasing mom or dad shouldn't matter at all in how you perform in school or on the basketball court. All right, but do you get a lot of blowback from parents about this? You know what? I have not. I really? Have not. I, no, no I, but that's not to suggest that you know, criticism of me and my speech doesn't happen. It's just none has ever reached me. <laughs> uh, i got to um, ask you real fast, David McCall. Your, your, your father is the, the famous historian. He wrote uh, so many amazing books. Uh, John Adams most recently. Uh, i got to ask you, well, what kind of father was he? Was he the encouraging kind of father, or was it a, a kind of a tough road for you? Well, I can say he was absolutely a terrific father. For me, an ideal father, a heroic father in his way. But the way I was raised would today feel like neglect. Ah, really? And in what way? Well, uh, you know, if I, I don't know, wobbled on a Spanish quiz, my father wasn't calling the teacher. If I didn't get enough playing time in the big game on Saturday, my father wasn't hectoring the coach. If, uh... I had a concern about a girlfriend who wasn't treating me right. My father didn't hire a tutor or a counselor for me. To get through it. <laughs> and you turned um, out okay. You did all right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, listen, interesting discussion. We're going we're gonna to take this forward to the audience and see what they have to say about it. David McCullough, thank you so much for joining us.